nobody can say. We're learning a way to do it right. We're the best of fun. We're gonna go far. We learn from the stars. We are the best of fun. We're having fun while we're learning to run and hit and throw and catch that ball. You can learn too. We're waiting for you. You gotta hunt. You'll love the best of fun. Hi, I'm Johnny Best of the Cincinnati Reds, your host for the Baseball Bunch. We're here to learn some things about baseball and have some fun. So, meet the Baseball Bunch. Ari. Brian. Michelle. Ray. Billy. Troy. O.C. Michelle. With special guest stars, the Dugout Wizard and the Chicken. You can learn too. We're waiting for you. You gotta hunt. You'll love the baseball fun. We now return to the baseball bunch. Pepper, let's go see. In line, in line. Let's have a little pepper game. Come on out. Good pepper game. Now let's go. Why do they call this a pepper game? Yeah, why not a salt game or sugar game? <laughs> why not a what? <laughs> That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. It's called a pepper game because when you really get to handle it, it looks like a hot pepper. The ball just bounces around and you start passing around. When you all get better, you can start passing it back and forth to each other. All it does is just get you ready for the game. Kind of heightens the reflexes and everything else. I'm going to teach you some hitting, so why don't I get warmed up here and let's play a little pepper, all right? Howdy, girl. Come on. Come on, Michelle. Let's take a little breather and look at one of the greatest hitters of all time. Why, that's a fine idea, Mr. Bench. You, of course, mean the Bambino. That is the rotund fellow named Babe Ruth. Well, that's exactly right. Babe Ruth played more than 50 years ago, but he is still baseball's most famous player. I bet kids really loved him. Yes, and Yankee Stadium came to be known as the house that Ruth built because Babe hit so many home runs there. How many, Johnny? In one season, Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs for the Yankees, and he hit them so far, you could hardly find them. You know, Babe Ruth hit twice as many homers as I've hit. I sure wish I could have seen him hit a homer. Johnny, let's see you hit one like Babe Ruth. I'll give it a try. Hey, chicken. Get out there and show me your stuff. You're always telling me how you do it. I see some chicken salad or something or some goose eggs that you're supposed to be throwing up. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to learn how to hit too so I can grow to be just like Willie Stark. 
Man, you have a lot of growing up to do before you can be like Willie really Stargate. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, Bunch, come on in. We're going to talk about the batting stance. All of you are going to develop your own batting stances before you before you become major leaguers, if that's what all of you decide to do. But the thing is that we want to be as comfortable as we possibly can when we get into the box. The whole thing here is being comfortable when you come up to the plate. Now, that doesn't mean getting in a rocking chair or anything like that. But be comfortable so that you can get all the mechanics together when you get ready to hit. Get you a good stance. Get your foot dug in just a little bit. That's because when you're hitting, that's right, when you're hitting, you've got to hit off this back foot. If you're going up and stepping up like this, you're not doing too much. You're not going to hit the ball hard at all. Dig in back here so that you can, you know, you don't bury yourself down there because you might make the pitcher mad, but you're ready to hit the ball. You've got to have full plate coverage, no matter if you're back here, if you're in here, whichever way you decide to stand, whichever way is comfortable for you. Have the plate covered. Don't let them throw that outside pitch by you out there, okay? Certain pitchers are going to make great pitches on you. You're not going to be able to hit them. And never feel bad because a pitcher makes a great pitch on you. You're going to make out. Accept an out, but be ready to hit at all times, and whenever you get your pitch, be comfortable, relax, and be quick. How do the major leaguers stand? Like this? Major leaguers all have different stances. Hey, this guy looks familiar. Getting comfortable now, and whack! The feet are set and the hand ready to go. Dig in that back foot. Keep your arms up high and away from your body. Put it all together with lots of practice, and it spells base hit. Oh, see, you got to look like Lou Brock when you're standing out there. He's got that little stance, and he stands like that. But we have all developed a style of hitting, and you can't really copy anybody. You can see the way the great hitters hit, and you can sort of emulate them, but they'll all come back to the same thing. Whenever they get ready to hit, they get into a position that they're comfortable, and then they're ready. So the question is now, are you ready? The whole world is waiting to see the baseball bunch take on that fireballing right-hander, the chicken. Come on, Let's come on. de-feather this chicken out here, right here, Ari. Tarn feather. Tarn feather. <laughs> All right. Scared of you. Scared of chicken. Chicken, you're chicken. <laughs> come on, Ari. Have a good swing here. Come on now. Feel comfortable? Yeah. All right, that a boy. Come on, Ari. Hit it Come on, big guy. Right back at the old chicken. Good. Right here. All right. Good shot. Go on in here, Billy. Now we got somebody as big as you are, chicken. You won't be afraid to throw this guy. All right, Billy. Can you reach the plate? Which way are you going to stand? That's it. All right. Keep your eye on the ball now. Oh, see that? What you're doing here is you're stepping back in the box. So. But get your stance a little bit closer so that when you open up, you, you still have plate coverage. Atta boy. All right. Come on, chicken. Give me some strikes up here. Come on, Billy. Look at the... All right. Nice going, Billy. You okay, chicken? <laughs> All right. Okay, Michelle, come on. Now, this is our hit and run girl right here. All right. Hit it, hit it right back through the chicken. Right on his beak. Oh! <laughs> Chicken, you ain't got anything. You'll never throw a no-hitter, chicken. Not against this group. Who we got? Who's left? O.C.? Dragging along here. All right, let's make chicken salad out of this guy right here. Yeah, let's get him. Come on, O.C., you can get him. Come on, buddy. All right, let's get this guy. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, O.C., O.C., O.C. Not everybody can be a home run hitter. Not on the first day, all right? Okay. Let's see if you can hit some singles now, because you're pulling your head out. See, when you're swinging, put your hand bat up. When you swing and see, the shoulder's flying out, and it pulls the head this way, and you can't see the ball out here. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Yeah, let me see a line drive. We want to be contact hitters first. Come on, O.C. Come, Come on, O.C. Come on, O.C. Face hit right off of it. Oh, check it out, boy. Nice going. Hey, boy. Nice going. The baseball bunch will return for these messages. We now return to the baseball bunch. Oh, wow. Hi. What's this thing for? To protect the soft spots on your body. 
Look at the chicken. <laughs> What's going on here? Chicken, are you at it again? No, he just trying to teach us how to play catcher. Look at all this neat junk we found. Junk? I need that to catch. I'll tell you, I'd be in trouble if I didn't have these. These are my shin guards. Not arm guards or feather guards, chicken. This equipment is very important because they protect all parts of your body. And you have to have it to block those balls in the dirt and runners that are trying to score at home plate. You know, people are realizing today that it's very important to have a good catcher on your team. He makes all the decisions for the pitcher, calls the pitches, and then he has to field bunts. And, of course, he has to block home plate. And blocking home plate can be very important when it gets to be a tight ball game. It is a very important position. My dad told me when I was a young boy, he said, catching is what the major leagues need, and it's the fastest way to the major leagues. And I'd have to say he was right. It's done well for me. The catcher. Now that we've seen how important the catchers are, let's play a little kid. All right, let's see it, Michelle. Make sure you're stepping straight at him now. Look for a good target. Give him a good target down there. Attaboy, Ray. Right to the target. All right. Nice going, Michelle. Come on, let me let me show you all something real quick. Come on, let's gather around here a second, all you catchers. Come on down here, pitchers. One of the toughest plays for the catcher is the pop-up. And, of course, being in a position of squatting down, facing home plate, facing the field like this, a ball pops up behind you, you have to find that ball. You have to find out where it's hit. If it's a long ways, you've got to take off immediately. If it's just a short ways, you've got time. You throw the mask behind you. You don't have to look at the mask. Throw it behind you. Make sure it is behind you so you don't step on anything. Go to the ball and catch it with both hands above your head so that you can see the ball. If the ball, if you try to catch it like this, a lot of times you'll lose the ball from here to here. Are there any questions? You ever ran into the umpires trying to catch it? The umpires are tough. I mean, you get you get down in the position and you take off. And... <laughs> 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 Probably think it looks easy, right? Well, it's not. Major leaguers all have problems doing it, and we're going to look at some of them just right now.
talk about. Yeah. Uh, line up. Line up. We'll all take turns, all right? Okay. Who's first? Me. All right, Ray, you can be first. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Remember what we can talk about. Go out and get it. Catch it above your head now. All right. Try to keep it like this now if you possibly can, okay? All right. You got it? Okay. Show us what you learned now. That a boy. Very good. All right, O.C. All right, no, O.C. can do this one. Come on, Michelle. Come on. All right, two hands above the head. You see the way she did that? Check it. Your turn. Can you do it, Chick? I think the chicken can do it. No. Come on, chicken. We, I think he can. Come on, chicken. Show us how you can do it. The baseball bunch will return after these messages. We now return to the baseball bunch. All right, bunch, does anybody know what this means? It appears to be a mathematical formula for calculating offensive efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a way to figure your batting average. There are two numbers you need to know, and then it becomes a simple division problem. You take the number of hits divided by the number of at-bats, and you have your batting average. Simple, right? The only tricky part is deciding what counts as a hit and what counts as an at-bat. For instance, if you reach base on a fielding error, it counts as an at-bat, but not as a hit. How about a walk? That and sacrifice flies, sacrifices, or hits batsmen counts as neither. So let's take a look at it now. All right, Brian, how about you? How many hits do you have this season in Little League? Uh, six. Six. All right. And how many at bat? You mean not counting the walks. Right. Let's see now. Fifteen. All right. Six hits divided by 15 at bat. And we add a zero. Fifteen into 60. Four times. And we add two zeros. 400. You're hitting 400. That's great, Brian. Johnny, what's considered a good batting average? Well, if you're in the major leagues, 300, you're doing great. Why don't we look at some of your favorite players and their career averages and see how they're doing? Hey, that's Rod Carew up there. Right. Rod Carew of the California Angels has a career 333 batting average, the highest of any player in the major leagues today. Why, he almost hit 400 one year. Well, 268 is kind of low compared to those others. But what do you say you forget about that for a minute and watch this home run ball? Not too bad, huh, Bunch? Jenny, how come your batting average only 268? I think I can answer that. You see, Mr. Bench is primarily a power hitter who concentrates on hitting home runs and on driving in runs, mm -hmm. not hitting for an average. So, Mr. Bench's 268 is really quite commendable. Well, thanks, Ari. But young hitters shouldn't try to hit home runs. Just make contact. That's the important thing. Meet the ball, get your base hit, and not worry about the home run. Johnny, have you ever hit a home run in the World Series? Yes, I've hit a few. But the biggest thrill was just getting the chance to play in the World Series. There you are with the whole world watching. Boy, if I can only pitch in the World Series. It's tension-packed drama. The baseball bunch leads the Reds 3-2. to two. Crafty right-hander Michelle Sowers needs just one more out to nail down the World Series. A full count on the ever-dangerous batter, Johnny Bench. Sowers shakes off her catcher. Come on, Michelle. Come on, Michelle, you can do it. You can strike him out. Johnny Bench at bat is ready. And out on the mound, so is Sowers. She's ready to pitch. Here it is. Bench swings and misses. Strike three. Sowers has done it. Michelle Sowers strikes out Johnny Bench. And the baseball bunch wins the World Series. 
Johnny Dent. <laughs> you did, huh? <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare to me. No, seriously. There's nothing wrong with dreaming, but it takes more than that to become a good ball player. First of all, you have to practice, and then you have to learn the finer points of the game. Let me introduce you to somebody who knows it all. What are the magic words for today, old dugout wizard? Three simple little words, Mr. Bench, will make your bunch play much better baseball. The words to remember are I got it. How many times have you seen ball players run into each other on a baseball field? As a manager, I've seen it far too many times. And you know why? Because players forget to yell those three magic words, I got it. Let me show you what I mean. but yet so easy to prevent. All you have to remember is that when a fly ball or a pop-up is hit to you and you can handle it, yell those three magic words as loud as you can and keep yelling them. Make sure your teammates can hear you. That way, no one is going to crash into you. Let's take a look at the way it's supposed to be done. <laughs> Remember to talk to your teammates out on the field. They are your partners. Don't be afraid to take charge, and the use of the voice is very important. Let me hear you all yell those magic words. Oh! All right, all right. I think you got the dugout wizard's message. Let's look at some of the other points that we learned today. First of all, the pepper game. Warming up and sharpening your reflexes. Now, batting stance being comfortable, plate coverage, and developing your own stance. The equipment, it's there for your protection. Use it. Pop-ups, make sure you get under the ball, use two hands, and for you catchers, make sure you throw the mask in the opposite direction. Batting average, hits divided by at bats. We've had five good points today, and I think you've done well on them. Nice going, Bunch. Mr. Bench, may I suggest that the bunch would benefit from demonstrating those techniques on the field. Man, that's the first thing you said all day that I can understand. Let's go play ball. Yeah. Right. Be sure to join us again next time when the baseball bunch gets more tips from the top stars in Major League Baseball. Let's go, guys and gals. Baseball Bunch is brought to you by Major League Baseball Productions.